Hello, Tenfold. My name is Fanisa and I'm from Fosloras. May you please assist me with this life sciences question about blood glucose and insulin concentrations? Thank you. Sorry, Fanisa. Sorry, sorry. You know, it's getting old. What can I say? You know, us old tunnies, you have to bear with us a little bit every now and again. So let's have a look at this question. It says the graph below shows the effect of eating many small meals, guys, remember, many small meals versus eating fewer large meals. This doesn't apply to guys who eat 20 large meals a day because I know all growing grade 12 boys are going to be eating lots of large meals. We don't want normal people that, that, that eat normal meals. Okay, so it's on the blood glucose. So we're looking at glucose and insulin concentrations in a normal person. So this isn't a person with diabetes, it's a normal person. Okay, the arrows on the graph below indicate the meals that were eaten. So let's get a clearer picture here. Let's look at the first graph. It says the effects of eating many small meals. So it's telling you many small meals on the gl blood glucose and insulin concentrations. Then here, what is this? This is your y-axis. And what do we have on the y-axis? That's your, in, uh, your dependent variable. And your time in hours is your independent variable. Remember here, your glucose and insulin concentrations, you're looking at milligrams per deciliter. People remember that a deciliter, there are 100 milliliters in a deciliter and 10 deciliters in a liter. So don't get confused. And milligrams, there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram, right? You should know that. I'm just refreshing your memories. All right, let's have a look at our graph. Always read a graph. This is a very valuable skill. And you need it for maths, you need it for physical science, you need it for geography, you need it for business studies. Make sure you know how to read a graph. Always use a ruler as well. What they're telling you here is here's your times. So this person had breakfast at a, just after or just before seven o'clock. And look what happened. Immediately the blood sugar level starts to increase as the glucose is absorbed. And then it gets to about 140 milligrams per deciliter. And then it starts to decrease as we use that glucose. Also, you've got insulin kicks in and insulin brings it down. So what does insulin do? Its function is to bring or decrease the glucose level. Now, if we look at how insulin and glucagon works, I'm going to show you here on the side. We have, um, to start off with, we have... Um, a low blood sugar. And if we have blo low blood sugar, what happens? The pancreas is stimulated and specifically the islets of Langerhans. Now the cells in the pancreas that are endocrine that are going to be stimulated are going to be your, uh, uh, um, the beta cell, uh, at least the alpha cells, and they're going to produce glucagon. So think of this, glucagon is produced when glucose is gone. Glucagon is produced. This is a hormone. The hormone travels in the blood and, let's just put blood here, and it travels in the blood to the target organ, the liver and the muscle cells. And it tells the liver and the muscle cells, guys, we need glucose. Glucose is gone. So you know what? The liver and muscle cells will then convert glucose to glycogen. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've gone. It will convert glycogen to glucose. And you know what that does? That will then increase blood sugar and we're ready to rock and roll you know those people when, when when they wake up in the morning and they're full of the joys of life they have so much energy they can go for a 5k run without eating anything those people their bodies their pancreas and the islets of Langerhans release glucagon in its droves so and you always find that they're also quite skinny because they have a very fast metabolism but when you have very high blood sugar, so you've just had a chocolate or a cool drink or um, you've just eaten a huge meal, what happens? 
insulin is released. And insulin has exactly the opposite effect. So we're going to do insulin in a different color. So let's do this. So when the blood sugar is high, okay, what happens? Pancreas is going to release insulin. Okay, and that insulin is going to travel in the blood as well. And it's going to go to the liver and the muscle cells because they are the target organs. And they are going to cause them to convert glucose to glycogen. And I was silly here because I now have no space. And that is going to then cause an in a, a decrease in your blood sugar. All right. So insulin works opposite to glucagon. They are antagonistic. Glucagon is going to increase your blood sugar. Insulin decreases it. Now, if we look at this graph, let's get our yellow back. As the, as the glucose level increases, insulin increases and it causes the glucose to come down. Why? Because it tells the liver and the muscle cells, guys, convert the glucose to glycogen and store it. Okay, now if we have a look further down and we look at the effects of eating fewer larger meals on the blood sugar and glucose level and insulin, what happens? This person is going to eat just before eight. They eat a mammoth meal right that then pushes the blood glucose level way up look here it goes beyond that should be 160 and the 180 these two so let's just fix that 60 and that's 80 and it pushes it way up but look at the insulin that is needed to fix that there's plenty of insulin much more insulin than we are going to find if we when we're eating smaller meals this is less we got less glucose, less insulin required. More glucose, more insulin required. This, so now it comes down. By 12 o'clock, this person is now bushed. They've got no energy. Look how low. Here, it falls to about 50 milligrams uh, per deciliter. It's about 50. But here, it drops way down to almost like uh, um, 40. So we now have a problem. No blood sugar, you're tired, listless, no energy, and it then increases again once you've eaten. And then another eating session here, and it lifts and it makes you nice and sleepy. So what do you think? Having look, a look at these graphs, what does your common sense tell you? Eating lots of small meals is much better than eating a large, uh, two or three large meals. So here we go. State what happens to the blood glucose concentration immediately after a meal is eaten. People... They're asking you nothing other than what you see here. What happens? The blood glucose level is going to increase. Let me just get my pen again. Blood glucose increases. I mean, you don't even have to know anything. You just have to be able to read a graph. <laughs>